Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for tuning in for our noontime Lenten devotion. I'm Pastor John Finella from St. John's, Burry's, um, United Evangelical Protestant Church. We welcome you to this time of reflection and prayer and uh, devotion as we continue to make our 40-day journey to the celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. I'm coming to you again today by way of video. Uh, thankful for this opportunity to be able to share in this way. At the church, we've been having some difficulty with our live stream uh, technology, which we are in the process right now of, of addressing and trying to uh, correct the problems that we've been having in recent weeks. So um, just to be absolutely sure that you were able to receive this devotion, I'm going to pre-record this video and uh, post it onto YouTube, and hopefully you, you can watch it uh, at noon or at your convenience. So uh, thank you for tuning in as we today look unto the Lord. I want to begin reading the words of Galatians 3, verse 13, where the Apostle Paul said, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Let us pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word, which reveals to us your love for mankind and how it conveys to us the inestimable value of the human soul. We know, Lord, that it is your desire that man should not perish, but that we should come to repentance. And we know that you sent your Son into this world to save us, and as well to provide an example of a faithful and loyal servant. Lord, may we profit by his coming. May we each today, wherever we may be in our lives, heed his warnings, accept his teaching, May his words be not unto us foolishness, but rather may they be to us the power of salvation and a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, help us to love him who gave himself for us and suffered and died in our place in order to reconcile us with you, our God and Father. And may we have faith in the cleansing power of his blood today. For we know that it alone can purify us and blot out all of our sins. Help us, Lord, to remember what it cost you and your Son to redeem mankind. And may we in the future put forth greater effort to overcome temptation and to resist the evil one and to be faithful and loyal to you, to Christ and the Holy Spirit, so that finally with all of your redeemed we might be gathered into your heavenly kingdom where we shall praise and glorify you, the triune God, from everlasting to everlasting. Father, bless and consecrate this time of devotion this afternoon, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I wanted to share a scripture with you again today, That actually the same scripture that I read for you and, and reflected on last week, but I want to think of a different theme today as we are continuing our reflection during these Lenten weeks on the subject of the will of God, uh, leaving whatever behind, the idea that life is meaningless, the idea that life has no purpose, has no direction, but what a different view scripture has of our life, where we know that God has a will, a distinct and purposeful will for each of us, as well as for the entire world. Well, today I just want to share with you from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 14 through 22, just read these few verses. Again, I read these last week, but I'm going to focus on a different part of this reading today. The Apostle Paul said, And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all, see that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. This is the word of the Lord. I want to share with you a few for a few moments a reflection on the subject of giving thanks. Giving thanks as a part of doing the will of God. 
and how important that is. That is a connection that the scripture makes, that as we do the will of God, as we live our lives in this world and carry out God's plan, that we are to be marked by a spirit of giving thanks, thanksgiving. I like the story of a poor farmer who came to the village pastor one day to complain about his life. And he came to his pastor and said, Pastor, my life is unbearable. There are nine of us living in just one little room. What can I do? And the pastor answered this. He said, go home and bring your goat into that room with you. And the man was angered by that counsel, but the pastor urged him to do what he said and to then come back in a week. And a week later, the man came back and he looked even more distraught than he was before. And he said, Pastor, we can't stand it. That goat is filthy and the smell is unbearable in that little room. And the pastor told him, okay, go home and let the goat out and then come back in a week. Well, a week later, the man came back and returned to the pastor. And he said, Pastor, life is beautiful. We are enjoying every minute of it now that there's no goat. It's just the nine of us. The pastor said, Friend, you have now learned to be grateful. No more complaining. Good, wise counsel. How many of us complain about our lives? How many of us forget to be thankful, to give thanks in all circumstances? How many of us forget that when we talk about the will of God, that thanksgiving, gratitude, is at the heart of what it means to live our lives in this world under the will of God. That's what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 and 17 and 18. He said, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, which we talked about last week. And then he said, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. There's a lot of parts about the will of God that are unknown to us. Where is God leading me next? What am I supposed to do tomorrow? Which job should I take? Who should I marry? There's a lot of things about God's will that leave us with a few question marks. But here's a few things where we, can, we don't need to have any question marks when it comes to his will. That we are to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and then give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You know, about 25 times in his writings, the Apostle Paul exhorted Christians to be thankful. 25 times. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be thankful? Well, it is remembering to acknowledge God as the source of all the blessings of our life. Think of things like our health, our family, our country, our home, our faith, all of these things we recognize that God gave them to us. Thanksgiving isn't just thanking God for the thing. It is thanking him for the giver of the thing. So as we enjoy good health, yes, we thank, thank you, Lord, that I enjoy good health. But really, Thanksgiving is saying to God, thank you, God, that you supplied me with health or my family or my country, or my home. God is the source of our every good and perfect gift in life. But you know, thanksgiving is also an encouragement to remember to give thanks even in the midst of difficult times. I think that is the unique quality of this passage in 1 Thessalonians, where we're not only told to give thanks, as if that wouldn't be enough, but we're told to give thanks in all circumstances. You know, one person that did that was the Apostle Paul himself. And the Apostle Paul had a very difficult life. Sometimes we get to thinking about the apostles, the disciples, or those in the Bible, and we think of them as men who walked around with halos over their heads, and their life was just pristine. They had no problems. They just walked through life loving Jesus and enjoying a perfect, serene life. But you know that was not true of any of Jesus' disciples. It was certainly not true of the Apostle Paul. 
the Apostle Paul suffered a great deal. Let me read for you one of the accounts where the Apostle Paul sat down and wrote about some of the sufferings that he experienced. They're almost hard to comprehend. Listen to what he said in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 24 through 28. He said, Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Five times he was whipped. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, and danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, and through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and, and apart from other things, he said, there's also the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. A pastor's anxiety. And yet, this same apostle who experienced all of that is the one who in his writings told us 25 times to give thanks. And why did he tell us to give thanks? Because he himself gave thanks to God. I like the metaphor that thanksgiving is a crop that can grow in any soil. In other words, thanksgiving isn't just something that is good when times are easy, but thanksgiving and the giving of gratitude to God is something that can even be a reality in our life when life is at its worst, like it was for the Apostle Paul. Even there, it is God's will that we give thanks. Now, what's the application to us? It's one thing to talk about the Apostle Paul and all that he experienced, but what about you? What about me today? What's the application to us? Well, I want to suggest to you today that you and I not be the kind of people that always focus on the negative in life. You know, that's a temptation. It's a reality. We all have that choice. We can go through our lives and in any situation, at any given moment, we have the ability to choose what we focus on. Do we focus on the negative or do we focus on the goodness of God? And that truly is the choice. Because when you dwell on the negative in any circumstance, you are choosing to ignore the goodness of God in that moment. Because the truth is, God is good in every part of our life but we have to look for his goodness at times. What are you choosing to focus on today in your life? Instead of being the kind of person that focuses only on the negative, what I want to suggest is that you be the person who looks for the goodness of God in all things and give thanks for what you see. Because if you look with spiritual eyes, wherever you are today, if you look with spiritual eyes, you can always find the goodness of God somewhere, somewhere. No matter what you're going through, God's goodness is shining through somewhere. And it's our role to look for it and give thanks for that, rather than looking at a circumstance and complaining and being filled with bitterness or anger or frustration. No, choose rather to give thanks in all circumstances. Let me give you some examples. If your car breaks down, for example, on the side of the road, it's one of the worst things that can happen in our lives. If your car breaks down on the side of the road, what do you do? Well, you could be angry, bitter, frustrated, get out and kick the tires, get out and throw something, uh, complain, call someone and chew their ear off about it. Or you could also give thanks that that car got you as far as it did in life. Think of all the walking it spared you in the months and years prior. Uh, yeah, you may you may be uh, up against a challenge now, but you know, th think of how far it got you and say, Lord, thank you that I haven't had to walk 
for the last two and a half years or whatever, the last time you, your car broke down, that, that you've had a reliable set of transportation for that time. You, you, can, you can focus on either one of those in that moment. I'm suggesting choose to focus on the goodness of God. Here's another example. A lot of people these days have been getting colds and uh, congestion. And, you know, if you get a cold, it, it makes you feel so terrible, doesn't it? You just feel like your head's going to fall off. You feel like uh, life is coming to a, a swift end for, for a lot of us if your cold is bad enough. and It's terrible. But if you get a cold, how about instead of thinking about how miserable you feel, which I'm sure you do, we know that, how about giving thanks that someone invented Kleenex so that you don't have to wipe your nose on your hand or your shirt the way that people used to do. You, you can you can reach over and, and uh, you use a little clean piece of Kleenex and half of them now even have lotion in them. So when you wipe your nose with it, it, it moisturizes your nose so it doesn't turn all red. And, and, you know, give thanks for the little things in life. Don't overlook little things just because you're going through a difficulty in your life. Just recently, we lost power in our area. Um, here in Western Pennsylvania, a lot of us uh, had to go without electricity and internet connection for a couple of days. Some of you might still be actually dealing with that even right now. It's, been it's taken a little time to get the power going again. But when you lose power in your house, this is another example. I mean, this is just a real life thing. Give thanks even there. Give thanks that you didn't lose your roof also or your windows, or your coat to keep you warm when the furnace wasn't working. You know, give, give thanks about what you didn't lose, as opposed to focusing on what you did lose. You see the distinction? The distinction is, what are you looking at? What are you focusing on? And the truth is, that even when nothing goes wrong, even when your life or your day is, you know, one of those red letter days. It's a great day. Nothing goes wrong. And every time, every so often, we have a day like that. It seems like every, we just kind of float through a day here or there and everything seems to be easy and goes the right way. But you know, even there, even on easy days, thank God even there that you've had such an easy day because you know what? That is a whole lot more than you deserve. None of us deserve easy days ever. So if, if we ever experience one, you get the end of the day, you think, you know, this has been a pretty good day. You ought to sit back and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for a, a, a day like this. I've enjoyed it so much, and I didn't even deserve it. You just gave it to me out of your grace. Choose to focus on the goodness of God. When times are good, when times are easy, thank God for his provision and his abundance. But in times of difficulty... Thank God for his companionship. Thank God for his grace, which is sufficient. Thank God for the prayers and support of other people. You can thank God in all circumstances. That's what the apostle meant when he said, give thanks in all circumstances. This, this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And you know, friends, in all times, no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through in life, the greatest thing we can be thankful for is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Regardless of what it is that we're going through, we should think of our loving and dying Savior who poured out his life for the forgiveness of our sins on the hard cross of Calvary. Or we should think of his empty tomb where he defeated death and he rose triumphant in victory for us. Or we can contemplate how Jesus resisted temptation at every turn and defeated Satan on our behalf. And we can reflect on how Jesus was perfectly righteous and that he credits his righteousness to us by faith, faith alone. We remember how Jesus promised that he was going to go and prepare a place for us and that he would one day come and take us to be with him forever there with himself. And we also can consider that what Jesus said, that he would one day return in glory for us, though no one knows the day nor the hour. Nevertheless, he promised that one day he would return. And he did all of that for you and for me. 
And when we think about the glorious gospel of Christ, we are moved to thank God. If you're going through a difficult spell in your life today, today is one of those days you think, man, I shouldn't have even got out of bed today. I didn't know it was going to go this way. Sit back and think of what Jesus did for you today. All that he accomplished. All that is been, has been done for your salvation and your spiritual good. Think of that and give thanks. Thanks be to God. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Would you join me together in praying the Lord's Prayer today? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friend, may the Lord today keep you from all evil. May he keep your life. May the Lord keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. God be with you today.